my God, what we're doing this amazing video. And this video, we're doing another reaction video. And I do want to say, I am so, so, so very sorry that I haven't been recording. Oh, sorry, that's just that. Got my phone. Because I don't know how poor, so I can't afford those fancy cameras and the fancy setups. And blah. But, oh well. Right? We all have to start somewhere. But, yeah, I have been super duper busy. And when I mean busy, I mean busy. If you guys don't know, if you guys don't know, I do work two jobs. On top of doing, trying to do a lot of TikToks and YouTubes. And it doesn't really work out very well. So, I worked like 100 hours a week. Just for you guys. And for myself, because I have to do something, right? There you go. Today, we are going to be reacting to... 10 Killers Who Escaped From Prison. Let's get into it. Time for smoke. The windows are open and the fresh air is blowing through and the sky was blue. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at 10 killers who escaped from prison. Every month, I put between myself and that unit in that prison. I literally felt a weight coming on my shoulders. For this list, we're looking at convicted murderers who managed to break out of custody before... If you guys don't know, last month in September, this was, of course, recorded way before... a long time ago. <laughs> I just checked the date when this was recorded. It was recorded 11, well, uploaded 11 months ago. So, yeah. So, yeah. It's stupid. But last month, um, well, last month, and... Eh, that would have been September. There was a prisoner escaped from Pennsylvania. And I bet you he would have been on this list. If they made it. Of course. They now. Betcha. Their sentences were up. We'll be considering escapees who were eventually recaptured. And those who have somehow managed to remain on the run ever since. Did we miss anyone? Let us know in the comments. Alan Leger. The crimes of Alan Leger were so despicable that he was named the monster of Miramichi, born in New Brunswick, Canada. Leger's first criminal stint happened in 1986 when he participated in a robbery that resulted in the death of one man. They had closed their store for the night and uh, had just gone into their home when all of a sudden the door was burst in. Leger was in prison for the crime when he managed to stage an escape during a visit to the hospital. Inside the washroom. I would be a bad. Sorry, guys. That was literally my counselor. I just knew it was because it was a private number. So I kind of had to answer it. So I'm deeply sorry. And now let's get to it. Mushroom. Alan Legere uses a makeshift key to undo his restraint. Oh, Legere was in, that resulted in the death of one man. They had closed their store for the night and uh, had just gone into their home when all of a sudden the door was burst in. Legere was in prison for the crime when he managed to stage an escape during a visit to the hospital. Inside the washroom, Alan Legere uses a makeshift key to undo his restraints. He then bursts into the hallway, waves an improvised knife, and sprints towards the hospital exit. He remained on the run for seven months, during which he reigned terror on the town of Miramichi and its environs. This was not just an ordinary escape. This was Alan Legere, a convicted murderer, a very brutal man. Legere was responsible for the deaths of three women and one reverend father. After evading police for three years, Legere was recaptured in 1989 and sentenced to life imprisonment for the crimes he committed while at large. Donald Leroy Dang. Evans. 
Donald Leroy Evans was convicted of two murders, although he claimed to have been responsible for about 70 others. He was first arrested for the assault and murder of a young girl without a home in Gulfport, yeah, Mississippi. Evans owned up to the crime while in police custody. And of the 70 other murders he confessed to, he was only reliably linked to one. In 1994, serial killer Donald Evans confessed to killing Randy, even drawing a map of Kincaid Lake State Park. While awaiting the trial in June 1993, Evans escaped from the Harris County Jail with three other inmates. It only took a little over a day for authorities to fish Evans out of a shed in a nearby yard. He was on death row at the Mississippi State Penitentiary Good. when he died at the hands of another inmate in 1999. Lida Southard Nicknamed the Black Widow, Lida Southard was one of America's first ever documented female serial killers. Between 1912 and 1920, Southard got married four times, and all four men died under mysterious circumstances. She was arrested and convicted of second-degree murder after traces of arsenic were found in the bodies of some of her former husbands. While serving her sentence, Southard broke out of prison with the help of a guard who had taken a liking to her. She sawed off the bars in her cell window and climbed down the prison wall using a rope made out of blankets. Southard managed to evade recapture for 15 months, during which she got married for the sixth time. Why? To bring your brand Why would into you the real world? Shopify is ready for that. Why would you marry? Did you did did they know that she would be that was she supposed to be in prison for killing or what? I, ah, so many questions. Managed to evade recapture for 15 months, during which she got married for the sixth time. Sarah Jo Pender. Those four and a half months that you were on the run, what was that like for you? It was beautiful. Yeah. It was simple. In 2002, Sarah Jo Pender was convicted, alongside her then-boyfriend Richard Hall, of the murders of their two roommates. Although she wasn't present when the murders took place, Pender was accused of orchestrating the crime and manipulating Hall into committing it. Because of this, she was referred to as a female Charles Manson during her trial. After serving just six years from her 110-year sentence, Pender connived with a prison guard and a former cellmate of hers to escape. She had manipulated him uh, to the point where uh, uh, planning, uh, getting him to plan uh, his work for that day to get a vehicle inside the facility. She began a new life as Ashley Thompson in Chicago, but that only lasted about four months. The male staff member in this case fell for some of her tactics and found his weak points and used them to her advantage. Pender was found and arrested after being identified by a neighbor from an episode of the TV show America's Most Wanted. At no point you were a danger to anyone. No, never. Sharon Kinney. Three people are thought to have lost their lives as a result of Sharon Kinney's murderous actions. This includes her husband James and the wife of a boyfriend both killed in 1960. Kinney was unsuccessfully tried three times for James's murder and fled to Mexico before her fourth trial was set to begin. While there, she shot and killed another man, maintaining that it was an act of self defense Yeah, she probably had a gun, to be honest, to sit with her on the plane because back then, you can do something like that. Now, you can't. You can't even... Sad, but you can't even walk down the street with a gun without being questioned. Because, well, yeah. Fence. Nevertheless, she was convicted and sent to a Mexican prison for 13 years. Taking advantage of the prison's lax security and an unusual blackout, Kinney escaped on December 7, 1969, just four years into her sentence. In December of 1969, Sharon Kinney apparently squeezed through an unguarded window and vanished. She is currently still at large and holds one of the longest outstanding warrants in American history. When Sharon told you something, it was expected that you believe it. You were just expected to believe it.
she was that good. Gonzalo Lopez. Of the six people who died at the hands of Gonzalo Lopez, five lost their lives after he escaped from prison. Lopez had initially been handed a life sentence in 2006 for the kidnapping and death of Jose Ramirez. Almost two years in, he was given another life sentence for an earlier crime in which two police officers were shot at. In May 2022, Lopez was being transported to the hospital with 15 other inmates when he staged a daring escape. He's in the woods! The video shows cops on the scene as Lopez fled into the woods. Lopez remained on the run until June 2nd when he attacked and killed five people at their family ranch in Centerville, Texas. He was involved in a shootout later that day with police and lost his life in the process. I do feel that had Mark been made aware that he was within a day or two of being on his property, he would have never exposed those kids to that danger. James Earl Ray. James Earl Ray was still on the run after escaping from prison one year earlier when he committed the crime he has now become most infamous for. Ray first escaped from the Missouri State Penitentiary in 1967 while serving a 20-year sentence for armed robbery. Fueled by his racist ideologies, Ray traveled to Memphis, Tennessee in 1968, where he assassinated prominent civil rights leader Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was arrested two months later and handed a 99-year prison sentence. On June 10, 1977, Ray pulled off an escape from prison alongside six of his fellow inmates. The men fashioned a makeshift ladder from pieces of pipe, which they flung over the 10-foot wall. One of the men is a plumber. His attempt at freedom only lasted three days. The convicted killer was hunted down and recaptured about eight miles away. Away from the prison. Joseph Christopher Garcia. Clear. Me. It's clear. I'll open the outer gates. On December 13, 2000, a group of seven inmates at the John B. Connolly Unit Prison in Texas managed to escape from the facility at lunchtime. One of them was Joseph Christopher Garcia, a Bear County native who was imprisoned for the 1996 murder of one Miguel Luna. Once out of prison, the group embarked on a crime spree robbing retail stores to fund their lifestyles. After robbing one such store, they shot and killed Aubrey Hawkins, a police officer who was responding to the scene. They were arrested a few weeks later after being profiled on America's Most Wanted and sentenced to death for killing Hawkins. Though Garcia claimed that he never fired a shot, he was convicted under the Texas Law of Parties and sentenced to death. Garcia was executed by lethal injection on December 4th, 2018. Actually, in my state, um, it's weird. We are actually the first state to ban the execution. But there only has been one in the state of Michigan. And that is actually I think downstate that they did it. But it took place actually a part of it part of their crime took place in my city. Midland. And Midland is a safe city. Believe it or not. But of course that was back in the nineteen thirties. So back then Midland was a village. Like a tiny village. So but now we have over eighty thousand people in the county. So yeah, like eighty four thousand or whatever. Then in the city of Midland it has about forty almost forty three thousand, so hey. Nikolai Jumagaliv, nicknamed Metal Fang. Nikolai Jumagaliv is responsible for the deaths of at least 10 people, some of whom he also cannibalized. He was tried for his crimes, but found not guilty by reason of insanity. This led to him being remanded to a mental health facility, from which he managed to escape in 1989. Jumagalev spent the next two years moving across different countries in the former USSR. During this time, he is alleged to have killed more people in Moscow and Kazakhstan, with one charge leading to a conviction. Tired of wandering around the mountains, Jumagalev intentionally brought attention to himself, 
leading to him being recognized as the infamous cannibal. He was rearrested and is currently confined to a mental health facility. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings yeah, and yeah, switch yeah. on That's notifications. Ted Bundy one of the most infamous serial killers of all time. Ted Bundy managed to escape from prison not just once, but twice in a seven-month span. The judge decreed that he didn't have to wear shackles or handcuffs, so he walked about the courtroom and back into the law library as a free man. After he was first arrested and convicted of a kidnapping in Utah, Bundy was extradited to Colorado, where he was scheduled for a murder trial. Under the guise of acting as his own lawyer, Bundy was able to escape through a window in the courthouse's library. Bundy jumped out of this second story window at the front of the Pitkin County Courthouse this morning. He was scheduled for a court appearance and apparently had been locked into the, the law fall. library by sheriff's deputies. He was arrested six uh, days later after being stopped by two patrol officers. Bundy's second escape came seven Seven months later, when he slipped out of jail through a tiny hole he carved out in the ceiling of his cell. He used a bunch of his law books and assembled them along with some pillows to make it look as if there were a body in the bed. He was recaptured after two months and eventually sentenced to death. They woke up in Glenwood Springs and discovered that Bundy had escaped basically 12 hours before. And he can go pretty far in 12 hours, so just say it. But guys, that would be it for this video. I'm going to try to make more videos as much as I can. Sorry about the delays, and as you'll see, if you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe, and don't forget to like and subscribe and share the video because here's the thing guys we are literally 60 subscribers away from 1,000 subscribers we're so close 60 away you guys are the best and i guess i will see you guys on the next one goodbye